Hello friends, Big Stupid Green here, and today I have a short tutorial, hopefully short, tutorial of how to use Arkham Horror uh, LCG Super Complete Edition mod. Um, every time I've seen someone put out a video with this mod or stream with this mod, people are really, really curious about it and how to use it because it's a really cool mod, so I figured I would try to make a tutorial of what I do for it, um, use it for my videos. Uh, first thing we're going to do is to make a deck. Um, on the upper right hand side of this table, you can uh, list all of the investigators, um, including the promos and the books. Uh, they each have this chest here, which is uh, set aside stuff. In this case, um, every one of these decks are uh, Chests come with um, Fantasy Flight Games' own pre-constructed deck, um, his signature, or their signature weakness and signature card, or signature cards, depending on who we're talking about. Uh, we could use this deck if we uh, were uh, at a penchant for punishment, but um, we could also make a deck through here. So... I would take these two cards, drag them over here. On the left hand side here we have the level 0 cards for every single class. And all you have to do is click a button and it will show all of the cards for that class. Now up here they have all of the upgrades for the class. So I just click on neutral here and it shows me all of the upgrade options I have for neutral. Now this mod isn't completely up to date with all of the cards that have been uh, spoiled for uh, the Circle Undone. I'm not sure if they even have all of them that the uh, game is released. So I know there's no uh, Meat Cleaver in here, which is a bummer. I know a lot of people like that card over, say, Baseball Bat. But anyway, you can click and it'll um, show all the cards you have in its collection. Um, I like to click, if I'm going to use this, and I haven't used this in a million years, I would click on it, hit Control c and Control v to make as many copies as I want. Uh, that way if I don't want them and delete them, I'm not deleting them from the whole library. Again, I, there's a lot easier ways of making your deck, so I don't usually use this. But um, if you want to put these back, um, you click or you, uh, you drag... Select them all, and then you hover over this button again, and it'll do some weird stuff like this. So you just let go of the mouse key, and it'll uh, throw all those cards back in there. Um, the easier way, oh, by the way, weaknesses are right here if you want to do it this way. Easier way is if you have an account on Arkham DB, and especially if you set your um, account to share private decks. Um, or if you publish a deck, you can use uh, this handy little widget to just spawn the deck for you. Uh, first, you need to click uh, Load Cards. That takes a little bit of time because they're loading 511 cards. And then you need to put the number of the deck here. Um, in this case, like that. And you just click on Build It and it'll do it for you. And this is just loading my uh, League of Extraordinary Investigators deck. Um, now in Arkham DB, your default deck building will include a random weakness, and this mod actually works with that, so if you don't have a weakness chosen, it will choose one for you, which is pretty cool. Um, and then I just take um, this whole thing, uh, click and drag, or click and hold will pick up everything. Otherwise, it'll just pick one card off the top, which is what you want sometimes. And then I drag them over here to the draw section of this little player sheet, which I know that's based on a real life player sheet, so that's cool. Um, and then to grab your uh, investigator card, um, each of these investigators have uh, these action tokens, their little card for moving on the locations, and their big card here. So 
let's find uh, Silas and we can I just click and highlight the whole thing you can drag it from here or you can um, copy and paste it control C control B paste the whole thing I like copying and pasting because uh, I find I accidentally delete some of these things and I don't want to um, wrestle with this rewind button uh, or reload a scenario obviously and I just uh, select all of these little action counters and put them in, in there. Uh, these are neutral counters. Let's say if I'm playing a rogue and I play Leo De Luca, I'll just drag one of these over here to so I know that there's four actions. But your investigator goes here, and the card goes here on the map. Um, and then from here, you can left click to add resources, add damage. Right click to remove both of those things. Uh, also, you can use these buttons to make your own damage tokens. Um, it's good for putting damage on allies and enemies. You put it on yourself, but this is a lot cleaner. And then, I think that's everything to do with the investigator. Let's go ahead and um, pull out a scenario. And if you give me two seconds, I need to tell my wife that I love her. Sorry. Let's uh, pull out a scenario. So let's say we're starting the Dunnage Legacy. We right click and search. And then it has a couple of nice tools for us. I'm actually going to zoom out before I do this. It has a couple of nice tools for us. It has the campaign log, it has the campaign guide. And then each scenario is its own contained thing. So if you're starting with extracurricular activity, we would click and drag this out. But actually, you're going to need this anyway, because even if you're starting with the house always wins, because if you search in here, we have this card, which is how you select difficulty in this game. I just put it off here. It's not the scenario card. But it's actually really cool. You click on one of these buttons and it will edit the, uh, this is the chaos bag. It'll edit that for you automatically. So as you can see here, this is what an easy setup would look like. But if you're playing on, if you're madman and you play on expert, this is uh, obviously it's been changed to add the really, really uh, big <laughs> negative tokens. But um, that's uh, how you do that. Also, it shows how many investigators are playing, and this is really important with other scripts in the uh, in the game. So I'm going to select one player. Um, the campaign log here, you can again hover over places where you have the T, and then you could type in whatever you need to do. Here, I'll type in my name. You can add experience, traumas, all that good stuff. Um, and then if you hover over it and it has uh, this little symbol that shows you can turn it to a new state, which is basically like turning a page. In this case, it shows our campaign here. So if you want to keep track of what scenarios you did, you can click it right there. And this is the campaign guide. Um, it is a little bit small for me, so I like to make it a little bit bigger. You can do that by right clicking. And then go for the scale button and just click and hold to scale that up or down. Um, you can also rotate this, uh, any of these cards with the uh, R and Q keys. So especially for like exhausting allies and enemies, that's really good. There is a way to rotate these 90 degrees. I don't know that yet. Uh, that is something I do want to know. Uh, so in the comments, if you know how to flip this 90 degrees, I would love to know. Um, additional setup. Let's go ahead and put this right here. Each scenario has a set-aside chest that we just throw in the set-aside pile. Um, we've got our counter deck. We've got you know, the agenda, the act, all that good stuff. Um, we have a scenario card, and this is just a preference. Let's move these where they need to go here. 
This is just a preference, but I like to copy paste this. So again, before I copy and paste anything, you want to just click on what you want to uh, copy paste or click and drag if you want to copy a few things. Um, I forget to do that and then I'll copy paste stuff I don't want or delete stuff I don't want. But anyways, I like to put the scenario card right here, um, which helps me uh, know what the bad tokens are without going all the way over here because you're going to be selecting chaos tokens with this button. Um, if you hover over a card, by the way, and hold down the Alt key, um, it shows up here, and then you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out of the card. Since I mentioned it, let's talk about Chaos Bag Tests. All you need to do is, once you've um, gotten the Chaos Bag to where you need it to be, you can just click on this button, and it'll pull a token for you. Click on it again. It'll um, take it back, and then you can take another test if you want to. Now, on some scenarios, especially with the cultist token, it seems like you have to pull another token. Uh, in order to do this, you're going to have to go in here and search for the token you just pulled and pull it out. So, um, again, if you have to reveal another token, take this out of the bag and then do your test. Those are usually in later scenarios. Then after that, just remember to pick this up and put it back in there. Uh, if you need to add chaos tokens, we have a reserve right here. This has a copy of every token in the game. Uh, let's say we had to add rocks. Say it was curtain call. Uh, spoilers. Again, I just like the copy paste option. So I can drag this back into the reserve so the reserve is complete again. And then I can just throw those into the bag if I want to. Just click and drag and hover so it's highlighting this the bag and it'll throw everything in there pretty easily. Um, locations. So just dragging out all of these locations here. Um, on this map, the locations will snap on to uh, either these symbols or these boxes. So that's usually a good thing, depending on how you're setting up the scenario. And then you can, the um, sorry, your box had these, but these are the little connector things. But I just like to grab them here. They're infinite. These have three states on them, as you can see with that symbol. So right click and go to state, and you can change it to a one way, change it to a four way, you can flip these over. Uh, there's plenty of options you can use um, for the connector tokens. Now I, I never use these in real life, but it's really nice in an environment like this to so just have the connectors out. Um, what else? Okay, the uh, Canada deck. What's really cool is you can just click on this and it'll pull an encounter for you. Hopefully not Ancient Evils, but we can't, uh, it is an example. <laughs> um, and then when you're done with the card, you can discard it. Um, if it is an enemy with victory value, and that's really lucky that it would uh, show that to me, and you defeat it, don't hit discard. Instead, um, drag that guy to the victory display, which is right there. And so this guy won't enter the discard pile. If you need to shuffle the discard pile, you can just click and hold on everything. Let me draw a couple more. Remember, if you want to move a whole stack, click and hold. If you just want to grab one, just click like that. But we can flip that over, put it in there. You can uh, shuffle decks a couple different ways in the in Tabletop Simulator. You can hover over it and hit the R key, that's what I like to do. Um, the other way is to click and hold and grab the whole thing and then shake it. And that will shuffle it as well. Um, so the agenda deck here, again it's something where you can click, left click and right click to add Doom and subtract Doom. You can also grab your own Doom and Clue tokens. From the from this, for my own convenience, I like to put. I'll often put one of these here so I can uh, copy paste clues and and do from this side of the board, or the table. 
if we are to, and this is where um, it's important to have the right amount of investigators, because when you flip over in one of these locations, it'll often spawn the clues for you. So the Orin Library here is one clue per investigator. I chose one investigator in here, so it'll uh, give me one clue. Let's see if I can make this different here. Um, yep, so for the science building, is still one clue per investigator, but I changed the setting to four investigators, so it uh, spawned four clues. Uh, it works 99% of the time. Um, the other times, just grab a clue from the spawning thing or copy paste. Um, all that good stuff. As far as damage and horror goes, this is another place you can get infinite tokens. Uh, you can also change the state of them. So in real life, they have ones and threes, but in this game, you could do whatever you want. You could have a seven damage token if you want to. If you want to get rid of them, you can either click and delete or drag back to the pool. You do the same thing with resources, but for this, for the uh, player, I just like to do it here. It's, it's a lot cleaner. If my allies or enemies get damage, I'll uh, use this option. So that's how you set up a scenario. Um, what else? There's a couple of tricks I like to use with Tabletop Simulator and one I used to use, but I don't use anymore. You can hold down the control key and a number key and pre-save a camera position. So if I'm over here, want to go to camera one, I hold down shift and hit one, and you can snap back to there. These days, I kind of just like to zoom out with the middle mouse button, get to where I need to be, and then zoom back in. But that is definitely a preference you can use. Um, this mod even has, um, I believe it has custom investigators too. Let's take a look at the side missions. They might be there. Um, no, nah, it doesn't look like they're there. Pretty sure this uh, mod has custom, some custom investigators. I could be wrong though. Um, it also has a couple of cool objects you can hold alt and look at. But, um, anyway, I think that's about everything. Let me check and make sure. Uh, if you want to make a text box, you just click on text and click anywhere you want. It's a little bit hard to uh, get the right position with this view. Um, you can choose to um let's see the camera here let me see if i can figure this out there's a camera option to see the uh game from top down view um i can't figure it out from here but okay right, camera mode so just right click on the board camera mode this is third person you can go first person which makes it look like an and FTS, I guess. So I'm zooming in and out with the WASD cards, and it's very weird. And I'm gonna get <laughs> get out of it. Um, top down, if you like this better. But for whatever reason, I like uh, third person. You can also right click and choose your camera state, load and save camera state, so we can go back to that loaded state if we wanted to. Um, also, there are objects you can spawn in Tabletop Simulator. Uh, the ones I like for this game, every once in a while you need to randomly choose something. Um, you can spawn dice for that. If it's a, a yes or no decision, you can spawn a coin. And if you just click and hold and you know chuck it somewhere, you don't even need to chuck it that far. But yeah, you can flip the coin. If you want to, uh, same thing with the die. You can roll that if you want to. Um, if you want to track how many turns your game is lasting, uh, you can spawn one of these counters. I think they're mostly used in games like Magic where you have a, a health pool. So again, click on that. Do add or subtract, clear, all that kind of stuff. Um, lastly, I like to, um, if you want to stream this game, I like to pull out a tablet and then I'll 
um, add my uh, Twitch chat pop out link. So it'll be on my chat. So if I see a chat and I'm not looking at my, I don't have a second screen, so I have an iPad with it up. But in this case, if I have this, I can um, hopefully see the message earlier. Um, you can also use um, the game, or this mod uses uh, iPads, or tablets, I'm sorry, tablets for um, custom campaign rules. Uh, let's pull out Approaching Storm. Now this is kind of old school. Uh, they changed this, or the, the creator of this changed this, but the scenarios look like books in earlier versions, which I think are really cool. Um, but they have their campaign guide on a tablet, and it will open up a website, which is really cool um, to me anyway. Anyway, I believe that's everything. Um, if you want to edit those text boxes, go back into the T tool there, and then you can click on it, change the color, make it bigger, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm Big Steve Grin. If you have any specific questions that I forgot, let me know. And then last but not least, if you drew the tentacle icon or token like three times and you just hate life, um, you can uh, flip the board, which is kind of cool. Flip the table in a rage. You have strength check, all that good stuff. I'm Big Steve Grin. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got anything out of it. And until next time, have a good one.